everyone. I have um, been needing to get back to the 3 and 30 challenge for a while, and I've been kind of stuck on J is for Jumbo. And I had some plans and didn't like them and readjusted, so I think I have a, a good plan today. What I mostly have are these three, three of these super jumbo paper clips. And that's what I plan to use. So I have my watch and I have some other stuff around here. Um, and I am going to start my watch for three and 30. So the first thing I wanted to do was I often make flat pens to include in my um, journals and I use a paper clip and these um, uh, ballpoint pen refills that I get from Amazon and I usually make them uh, like regular pen size I don't know if I have any I don't think I have any made at the moment to show you but I'm gonna make a super jumbo one using a jumbo paper clip they always have a paper clip on them so I think I want this this side, this is Blue Fern Studios paper, it's just a scrap. I think that I want this on the inside and this on the outside. So I'm gonna put that like that. And then I'm gonna cut that. See, I, I usually, I can often overlap them uh, with a normal paper clip, but because this is such a thick gauge wire, I need to stagger them, so. I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut it. So I like to, there's a lip here and that helps to keep the um, pen from sliding back into the paper. So I'm just gonna cut that there and that should enable the paper And I also like the paper clip to stick up a little bit so that you can put some ribbon on the paper clip. I'm just gonna check my frame real quick. Okay, it looks good. All right, so then it's really simple. I'm just going to uh, score and fold. And I know you're supposed to score on the other side, but I need to see what I'm doing here. And I don't think it really makes that big a difference. And I don't have a scoreboard, but I find that a um, straight edge and a bone folder work well enough. Sometimes I use my cutting board. I have one of those orange Fiskars cutting boards. Um, and sometimes I use uh, the groove that the blade goes down in those as a scoreboard, but I think for my purpose purposes, this is going to just work fine. Okay, so those will fold together like that. Um, I think, I think actually what I'll do is, um, I don't want to do this. I think I'm going to have the paper clip uh, fold over that piece there. So I'm just going to glue, put a bunch of glue down to glue everything in. I'm going to use fabric tack because it dries quickly and bonds to lots of different things without making it wet and wrinkly. And I do put it on both sides because um, of the paper clip. Okay. That's glue there. Cap my glue. Uh, my pen, ooh, strings. My pen will sit like that. And then my paper clip will slide in there. And I will leave a, a little bit 
at the top. Oops, doesn't look like I got that very well, did I? And this is what I would consider the front. And I just work the paper down around all those bumps and have it stick. And it's as simple as that. And then this can slide into the um, into a journal and you can put some fiber at the top so it sticks out and it is a great these flat pens are great for travel journaling. It's always right there at your fingertips when you need it, when you've got your journal. I think I might round these corners a bit. So this corner I'm going to round. It won't fit into a um, corner rounder, but if you do three snips, so at an angle, first and then you snip the corners of that angle you can create teeny tiny rounded corners at the top there I'm just squish that down with my fingernails and then this one actually might fit into a corner rounder no it won't I'll do that then this that method with this one then too so I'm going to do like a 45 degree cut and then I'll snip those corners. Same thing here, 45 degree cut, snip the corners, and get a rounded edge. And then once that dries a little bit more, I'll ink it up. Now let's see, how about some of this for a topper? There we go, picks up the shiny. There we go. Flat pen for a journal, for a large journal. Jumbo, number one. Set that to dry. Okay, the second thing I want to do is I have a giant roll of this. And I thought I would make a jumbo library pocket out of um, wallpaper. But the thing I was thinking was that I want, I'm going to cut a strip of this stuff. I'm going to make it kind of wide. But I want the pattern to show um, well, apparently I can't cut and talk at the same time. All right, I'm just going to cut this down along that fold. So this is going to be the width of my library pocket, but I want that, I want this to show, and I want it to show both on the backing of the library pocket and the front. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. And then I'll cut a separate piece. That'll be the backing bit. And then I'll cut a separate piece for the um, pocket part. Just need to, to hold that down with some glue, I guess. Because it's been rolled. Okay, so then I need a pocket part. 
and we want it to be the same width. So that's the width. I'm going to cut it along the line. There's my mark. There's my mark. back part and then this can be I'm just trying to side the image do I want for the pocket? I guess that's what I want there. Okay. So I'll just fold that over like that. Let's get a straight edge, straightish edge. That's the right way around. So then I'm just going to glue these two pieces together. <laughs> and then proceed as if it were one long straight piece of paper. Like that. Um, to make my library pocket. Okay, so I need a fold along this edge. Hmm, and I think I need a straight edge to do this. I'm just going to eyeball about, oh, I don't know, about a quarter, quarter of an inch-ish, half an inch. Get this stuff out of the way here. I don't want to score things that don't want to be scored. Okay. That side is scored, and we'll score this side as well. that down. How am I doing for time? 15 minutes. I'm doing okay. Doing okay. Okay. 
and then this will fold up like so. Okay, and then I can get rid of the excess fold here. It's hard to work with. I think I'm going to double this back because <clears throat> it feels so kind of flimsy, like it needs a little bit of a little extra sturdiness. And I think I'll give it a thumb hole. Hmm, my cutter does not like that, huh? circle punch is not happy with that paper okay <clears throat> and I think I'll give that edge some ink so you can see where that it's there against the pattern Okay, so I'll glue this down. <clears throat> and I will glue down this in just a smidge more. That was a little overzealous with my cutting. Uh, that will line up better with the edge of the backing. And I'll glue this down. Woo! Sticky. And that one. I don't often work with, um, what is this stuff called, Dan? Wallpaper. Let's just trim that. That little edge is bothering me a little bit. There we go. And that is good. I didn't open that up again. All right, I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And I think it needs some lace or something else on there. What do I have? Sorry, Silk. Closed up. Put some Sorry Silk at the top as a tab. Uh -huh, brightens it up, makes it nice and colorful. And what else can I do here? Got this. And 
that lace just kind of fades away, doesn't it? Um, green. Do I have anything green? Oh, this is pretty. Hmm. None of that's really doing. All right, I'm gonna give that a rest. Come back to it because those aren't quite making it happen for me. And the last thing I wanted to make, oh gosh, is a, um, that's my list. Um, I wanted to do a jumbo specimen slide. This is a piece of file folder. And I was thinking I could trim it down, fold it over, and cut a square, put acetate in the square, and cut down this side. Because there's like a little crease there that I'll get rid of. Use that for something else. And then if I score somewhat down the middle here. No, it's folding nicely. I don't even need to score. Okay. I don't need to cut it though. Okay, so this is my fold. And I was thinking this is a square hole punch. I wanted it bigger than that. Uh, but it's not that I'm not going to be able to get that close. Ooh, those look useful, don't they? I'll save those. So maybe what I'll do is I will just continue to, I will enlarge this hole using my cutter, which is why I left it out. it up with these. And maybe I will enlarge it just a smidge more. Let's see. Come down to... I'm going to use that line there as a reference. Okay, that is a nice big specimen hole. See, and now I'll just use some acetate. I have some acetate here from some crafty thing that I purchased. And I'll turn it down. widths and I need to shorten it up just a bit like that and now I can glue that down and that will open as well
on this side. it leaked out. That's too bad. It's okay. I can rub that off later. Okay. So, that'll be the back. So, I have the specimen side. Oh, it's the plastic is overhanging the edge a little here. I'll just trim that off. And then I have, excuse my arm, I have some um, dried fern. leaf that I pressed, that I found and pressed. And I think I will glue that all down. kind of want to get that the corner of that frond in there because it's so pretty it's sticking up you know what I'm gonna snip this bit off here and use that for something else excuse my arm again looks like a giant specimen slide. Jumbo, I should say. Okay. I'm going to... Oops. No. Okay. Oh, two, less than two minutes left. Alright. So I'm just going to clip this together for a mow. I'll have it make sure it dries. And I'm going to see what I have for labels. I know I have a bunch of labels. Oh, that's how that just ripped. Okay, but I have some green ones here. And these are Tracy Fox labels. I think I like that. I want the bigger one. All right, I'll just do that. This one to go right down the side. And then I'm gonna see if I can find another one to go across the bottom. Oops, there's my timer. Now it's time to cheat. Now the pressure's off. 
Okay. So now I want to find another label to put down across the bottom, which I believe I do have. Oh, wait. I also have some definitions. Ooh, I have a botany. So more Tracy Fox. And this is, these are her definitions. Oh, there's one of fern. Why don't I just go with fern? That seems to be the most appropriate. Seeing as how it is a fern. In my um, recent uh, seabird journal, I used it and pretended it was seaweed. And I inked it a little. It came out kind of cool looking. But this is just straight fern. I um, also bought the number ones, the number labels, I think would look really cute on this, but my printer was misbehaving, so I gave up on fighting with the printer. I'll figure that out later. And I think I'm going to put that fern. I'll center it. Fine. Okay. I should have inked those labels. Oh, well. Celebi. Okay. So there is a jumbo specimen slide with a dried fern in it. And I suppose, you know, you could probably put some uh, other papers there so that you could write on there. So that's one thing. Here is the flat pen. I could write right on there with my flat pen. And my ooh, library pocket. Ah, so this was probably the least successful of the things. I wanted to try working with this um, wallpaper. It's very, very floppy and curvy. So that, that one didn't come out so great, but I really like my flat pen and my library specimen pocket. You know, sometimes we have successes and sometimes we don't. Oh, you know what I was gonna do? Wait, one more thing. I have this experiment I want you to see. I wanted to um, try and make some, uh, you know, how vintage, that uh, sticky tape looks kind of yellowed and uh, I saw um, both on Etsy and on YouTube somebody had made a printout where you print out um, some of this printed up tracing paper with like kind of a tea dyed look so it looks like really old scotch tape or sticky tape cello tape I think you say in England and I thought well I, I wonder if I could make that so what I did is I is that my thesis oh we don't want to throw that out you have a thesis? I'm going you didn't know I had a thesis? No. I'm going to the library. Do you want to do less? Look, sir. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't. Thank you for finding that. We're cleaning out our um, storage unit, and my husband found my master's thesis. All bound and fancy. Mm. <laughs> um, so, anyway, what I did with this was, this is Mod Pod. I took some diluted Mod Pod and I squirted some vintage photo re-inker in it and watered it down a little bit and I think it looks like old cello tape. I was going to put that right there. I think I'm going to use some glue stick for that though. I forgot I wanted to try that.
I might try another formulation because it, ooh, you can, you can, ooh, look, I don't know, can you see? You can see the edge of the label through there. Ooh, I like that. Maybe I'll put some over here too then for balance. Fibers everywhere. Um, I might try and thin it out a little bit left next time and maybe, I don't know, maybe some, a little more yellow would look good. And maybe some clear Mod Podge across the top. I don't know. But that kind of does look cool, like it's old, old sticky tape. So again, it's just tracing paper with some watered down Mod Podge with some vintage photo rate inker, distress oxide inker squirted in there. And so I made some faux sticky tape. I'm happy with that. Well, that's fun. Well, thank you for joining me. Hopefully I'll get back on track with my three and 30 challenges now that I'm gotten past my fear of J for Jumbo. And see, K is next. I don't know what I'm gonna do for K because Tina did kites. Um, and I need to think of a different K because I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the kite idea. The only thing I can think of is kittens, but I don't really do kittens either. So I'm gonna have to think on that one. But thank you for watching, have a great day. Bye-bye.